and pick a little bit up on the brush. Let's see, I'm gonna start off. Oh, what in the actual? Welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be reviewing the newest tinted balm from KVD Beauty whatever it stands for right now. I guess tinted skin balms are coming back in because I just reviewed a new Stila tinted balm and I'll have that video link down below for you guys. But this one is a little bit different. The cardboard packaging and the plastic packaging is you can recycle it. It does not have a metal pan in it or anything like that. And it's very interesting. It is completely clear if you guys can see yeah i find this so satisfying <laughs> it is so so satisfying to me that it's like completely perfect and untouched and it does have a nice little weight to it it doesn't feel super cheap and plasticky as what i would think it is up there in price so it is pretty expensive but it doesn't feel super cheap i did end up getting the lightest shade which is shade light 002 and this is 38 dollars. the actual full name of this is a long one <laughs> so this is called the good apple skin perfecting hydrating foundation balm and it is 38 dollars and there are a lot of things with this foundation that we're going to be testing out today so this is supposed to be a buildable full coverage and it does say that you can tap onto blemishes or discoloration to build up the coverage you can use it with a sponge or a brush we're going to be testing out both today and it's supposed to be hydrating lightweight supposed to have a long wear there's no like claim to the long wear of like 12 hour 24 hour long wear it just says that it's long wear and it doesn't clog your pores it's supposed to minimize the appearance of pores which i do like and it is supposed to be flashback free so when you take pictures with flash it shouldn't give you like a white cast and it's supposed to have a fresh matte finish, which I'm gonna take as like a satiny finish or like a natural finish, but we shall see. This thing is, I don't know. It's like so interesting in person, this packaging, I can't get over it. So I did prime my skin beforehand with my Bad Habit Daily Dose multivitamin moisturizer if you follow my channel then you know i have been really enjoying that as a primer underneath my foundation so i just put a little bit of that on now i'm gonna zoom you guys in and we're gonna go through all of the kind of imperfections that i have that i would like to correct and test out with this foundation so we're all nice and zoomed in i do keep getting breakouts right over here i think it's from my face mask but I do have a little bit of breakouts. I do have enlarged pores on my cheeks. I do have a bit of breakout in my hairline, but I don't think the foundation is going to do anything about that. I do have some acne scars on my chin that they don't really bother me. They kind of look like freckles, but they are acne scars. <laughs> so we shall see. And I do have discoloration, some like red splotchiness going on i'm gonna keep you guys kind of like semi zoomed in to where you're, you can kind of see what's going on with my skin i think i'm gonna try out the brush method first and it's gonna pain me to touch this perfectly untouched product it's so satisfying for my foundation brush that i think i'm gonna use is the morphe m439 it's kind of like a dome foundation brush so i'm just gonna ruin the perfect product and pick a little bit up on the brush let's see i'm gonna start off oh, what in the actual heckin heck what <laughs> I might have to go and get a different shade 
Oh my, oh my, oh my. Whoa, when I saw this in person, I was like, yeah, this is my shade. The shades aren't really that light. Oh my. <laughs> oh my, okay. Well, I color matched myself um, on the shade binder for, <laughs> wow, on the Sephora website. Um, but <laughs> besides the color, um, it does blend out very nicely. <laughs> oh my heavens. Wow. Wow. So it does go pretty light. Don't let the packaging deceive you because I was very deceived. I'm probably gonna go and exchange this shade. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> so I went and returned that shade and because of, you know, COVID and all that stuff, you can't shade match. So I've been shade matching on the Ulta and Sephora website. And I wear shade 120 in Fenty foundation, 150 when I'm tan. And I wear the shade 20 in, in, in the naked foundation. And I wear shade Y 225 in the makeup forever foundation. So if you're anywhere in that shade range, there is not a foundation <laughs> that matches correctly unless you have non-neutral undertones. I say that because this is my third one. So I got shade two, way too light. Went with my Makeup Forever shade match, which was different than my Fenty shade match. And that one was super yellow. This one is shade 12, which does match my skin tone, but it is still a bit dark. So we're just gonna roll with it. Okay guys, because <laughs> thanks to the older people, employees for being so understanding of the situation. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, this has just been a journey with this foundation, but let's, start back where we were. So this one does match my undertone. I'll show you guys. It is still dark, so or maybe it's not as dark as I thought it would be. But I figured like if I really like this foundation, then it could be my summer foundation. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a still a bit dark. But it's the closest thing I'm going to get. <laughs> and this is shade 12. <laughs> to say again <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> what a journey I'm sure everyone's been through that journey before but oh man I haven't had that journey in the COVID days but it applied really well with a brush um the other thing that I noticed um with the lighter one was that this creases pretty easily um probably because it's a bomb but yeah this goes on really fast pretty full coverage compared to both sides of my face this isn't so bad okay this is a lot better now swatching but i do really like the application of the brush so let me try just a sponge now oh my gosh i picked up so much Oh, oh, this is like crazy full coverage with a sponge. Oh my. <laughs> I'm really not used to full coverage foundations, but hey, we're rolling with it today. Oh, wow. That is like, you can't even see my little mole right there. <laughs> That's some crazy coverage. So yeah, I really like the application with a sponge and a brush, which I feel like rarely ever happens. Wow. All right, I'm just gonna go through and just kinda tap everything and get in my creases because 
a little hard to do with a brush sometimes. <laughs> and they did say, so like this little pimple right here, they did say you could get like your finger and like, wow. Kind of, yeah, that is, wow. Okay, this is full coverage. Uh, and I rarely ever do full coverage. Before I set with powder and do the rest of my makeup, let's see how this is looking. I do think my pores look pretty good. It does not look cakey. It does have kind of like a natural finish to it. Um, it is slightly creasing in my forehead lines and a little bit in my smile lines. I was thinking of using this as a concealer but since it is pretty dark, I am not going to do that. I'm going to get one of my darker concealers though. This is my NARS Creamy Radiant Concealer in Custard, which I do use for my darkness underneath my eyes. If you guys have never tried the Lock It Powder by Kat Von D, that is one of my favorite products besides the eyeliner. I have gone through two Kat Von D Locket powders. They are amazing. I haven't done a full coverage in so long. I've been doing like natural and dewy. So this is like way different than what I've been used to, but I'm not mad at it. I'm not. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of this? It's definitely buildable. I think I could shear it down um, I probably would shear it down on a day-to-day -day basis just because I'm not used to the full coverage. I'm going to set this with my Fenty Pro Filter Powder because it does seem like it does crease and I am going to try and wear this like I normally would wear this foundation. So I'm just going to go through like where I crease and get oily throughout the day. I'm not going to set my entire face. My cheeks right here, my nose, my forehead, the lines, smile lines, my chin. So again, definitely if you are around my shade, this is a bit dark. There is somewhat of a shade. They do have like pink and other undertones, but there's not a good in-between of 2 and 12 that is neutral so that's my issue but with the powder on top it looks really good underneath my cheeks where I have enlarged pores it's pretty much completely covered all of that my pimple over here is gone my forehead everything looks pretty blurred my nose looks really good my acne scars did get pretty covered up Everything looks <laughs> pretty good for a full coverage. No cakiness, nothing looks weird around my nose that I can tell. But yeah, I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup off of camera. And then I'm gonna show you guys what everything looks like when I'm done. And then we're gonna get into a wear test. All right, I just finished the rest of my makeup up and it is about one o'clock in the afternoon and I'm starving. So we're gonna start this wear test off so yeah, I do think it is buildable and I do think it is pretty full coverage. I think we can all agree that this is pretty full coverage. It does feel lightweight. It doesn't really feel like a lot is on my skin. We'll test out if it is long wearing. It does feel hydrating. It doesn't feel like tight or matte or anything. You know, like when you put a really matte foundation on, but we shall see. And I do think that it did blur the appearance of my pores. Let me know if you guys think it blurred my pores. And I do need to test the flashback, but so far it does work with a sponge, with a brush. Um, it is full coverage, it's lightweight, very easy, just slap it on kind of a deal. So I like it, I, I like it so far. So let's see how this wears throughout the day, if it fades, if it creases. I do think it is going to crease. It is creasing a little bit in my smile lines and my forehead lines, but a lot of foundations do that to me. So we'll see 
if it gets worse or anything like that. So let's get on with the wear test. All right, it is about a six hour check-in and I didn't wear a face mask or anything, but this is how we are looking. I don't think it oxidized at all or, you know, got a little bit darker on my skin tone or, you know, it didn't oxidize, it didn't get dark. So it is getting a little shiny in my normal spots that get shiny, which isn't really a problem. My forehead is still looking pretty good of where I normally get shiny, but in my like cheek area it is. Um, the creasing doesn't look like it got any worse than it was when I first applied, so that is good as well. I just wanted to zoom you guys in on my nose. I don't really know what the heck is going on, but it does look a little weird around the corners of my nose. It's kind of hard to see it on this side, but hmm, maybe I'm just being weird, but Honestly, this foundation is looking pretty good. I'd be still confident in wearing this foundation. So I do like it so far. I'm actually pretty impressed, but I'm gonna go another couple hours to see how bad the shine gets, which honestly, this is enough time for me. I really don't do anything nowadays to where I'm gonna need my foundation to last for longer than like five, six hours, so. This is fine for my preferences. I would definitely keep using this foundation, which I am probably going to. I wanna kind of experiment with this foundation and see how it goes. Cause I feel like right now it'd be pretty fun to play with because I could use it as even like a little subtle natural bronzing. Cause this is a bit dark for me right now. So I feel like my natural foundation with like a little bit of this around the edges would be really cute. But yeah, let me know what you guys think with this check-in and I will be back in a little bit. All right, I'm looking like a mess, but it's about bedtime for me. So I've had this on for about nine hours now and it, oh, I have a little fuzzy on my face. I did end up wearing, oh, that was my hair. I did, a, <laughs> I did end up wearing a face mask, so, it did take it off just a teensy, teensy little bit off of my nose, but I really only had my face mask on for maybe like five minutes. I live in Texas, we lifted our mask mandates, but a lot of businesses still have the mask mandate. So we just put it on, walk in, walk out, take it off. So honestly having it on, it really didn't mess up any of the foundation. I don't think it got any oilier. Than the last time that I checked in. It's still oily in this spot, but everything else looks pretty dang good, which I'm pretty impressed with. My bronzer and blush and everything, even though I didn't put a lot on, I don't think it faded or looked really weird throughout the day. So I'm gonna have to give this foundation a thumbs up, which I have not liked any Kat Von D, whoops, KVD Beauty. Let me know, do you guys still, what do, you, what do y'all think of this whole like rebranding thing? Because I've had some conversations with my friends and I would love to know y'all's opinion of the KVD, Vegan Beauty, Kat Von D, what is it, Kara, whatever. I took Latin, side note, I took two years of Latin, um, AP Honors Latin. <laughs> And I hardly remember any of it, but apparently the new initials are in Latin. This like value or something of another, I don't really know. But I do have the Locket Foundation and this is a little bit too crazy for me, a little bit too matte, a little bit too much. And I feel like if you do have, you know, combo skin like me, and you're not really a big fan of this, but you still like a little bit more of a full coverage and you want something a little bit more hydrating, I feel like this is a great foundation to go into their whole line. I think it fits in really well. I love a lot of Kat Von D. There, I did it again. For as long as they have KVD, I'm always gonna think it's Kat Von D. Not a very big fan of hers. I don't think a lot of people are, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> 
it's just the initials. For the last, like, 10 years, we've had Kat Von D, and then now we're supposed to just, like, erase it from our brains, and it's kind of hard to do that. Another little thing, I would suggest the setting powder. If you are looking for a setting powder, I absolutely love Kat Von D setting powder. It's one of my favorite everyday setting powders. If you don't like some, if you don't like it too matte or like too satiny, it's a really good smack dab in the middle. If you have combination skin, it's a great setting powder for all day long and it it just looks great on your skin. But yeah, that is it for this video. If you guys haven't watched my last video, I went through and I pulled out all of my favorite products for dewy skin, which I have been obsessing over. So that video will be right over here for you guys. This video will be suggested to you by YouTube and my face will be right here where you click on it and subscribe to my channel.